So this is a part of a larger project statewide that we're looking at uh, ecosystem services of New Hampshire. And we're very interested in understanding, in, in particular, the role of uh, aquatic systems like rivers. This project is funded by uh, NOAA Sea Grant, and it's linked to uh, the larger statewide EPSCOR project. We're instrumenting measurements of water quality so that we can continuously measure how things are changing during storm events and otherwise to determine um, how much material like nitrogen is getting to the, to the coastal zone. So what we have here is a standard parameters, which would be pH, specific conductance, so basically electrical conductivity of the water, a temperature, and dissolved oxygen. And then here we also have uh, turbidity, so it'd be the cloudiness of the water, and then dissolved organic matter. And this is really the, the heart of what we're doing. This is the nitrate analyzer, and all these are going to give us continuous readings. So rather than just have coming out and having a grab sample once a week and getting a one-week reading, um, these will be probably every 15 minutes. Well, we're trying to figure out a big piece of the problem is, is what are the sources upstream? We understand that 25 to 30 percent of the nitrogen contributing to the problem in Great Bay comes from wastewater treatment plants. So that means 70 to 75 percent of the problem is nitrogen coming from, from the watershed. So we really need to put some energy into figuring out where in the watershed it's coming from and what those sources are. So this data will help us figure that out. Currently, watersheds we know are able to remove a lot of nitrogen, but we don't fully understand why or how they are able to do that. So this study uses new technology in, in the form of instrumentation where we can monitor continuously what the nitrogen fluxes are. And when we couple this with uh, measurements that we're also doing up in the headwaters, we want to be able to see whether the different land use signals that we see in the headwaters, are they uh, changing as they move downstream before they reach the mouth of the basin. We all know that, that Great Bay has just been determined to have impaired waters and that there are serious problems that must be addressed immediately for Great Bay. Um, the Lamprey River is the largest of the seven tributaries on the Great Bay. And it's, if anything happened to the water quality of, of the Lamprey River, it would severely impact Great Bay. The entire ecosystem is connected. For the Great Bay in particular, where nitrogen is a big issue right now, we really need to understand how, what's controlling the flux of nitrogen to the, to the Great Bay. And so this study, we think, is going to really help us to understand, hopefully, to uh, manage better the watershed. 